But we want to make sure that, you know, like we, we, we want to offer some sort of solutions and we want to show you, you know, talk about the why would you do that? And then sort of like what you would do, like, you know, you would do that exclamation point, right? So, so Kevin is going to take it away here in a second, but we're going to break down. Kevin, we're actually going to mechanically break this down through some video analysis. This is how we work with athletes and this is how Kevin works with his athletes. And we'll show you why it is that we do what we do and the things that we see. And then what we want to do to be able to correct it. And then the, the of course the, the, the silver lining, of how, how good this kid could be. Right. So Kevin, take it on away. So I have a, uh, a high school pitcher here who is six, four, six, five, um, came to me with some elbow pain. So this is one of our first, like kind of my video analysis of, of his, you know, He's uncorrected, essentially, at this point. So um, some of my philosophy, most of my philosophy is we want the body to do and move the way the body moves best, okay? And that's kind of what I call linearly, if that's a, if that's a, if that's a word, uh, meaning things are push, pull, uh, rotate. We don't want too many multi-planar movements, and, I, and I'm, going to sh I'm going to show this. So, you know, here he is up. You know, in a very good in a very good posture, but as soon now as he begins to go home, a few things happen immediately. Number one, we have spine tilt. Okay, and I want to. We have this cool little highlighter thing here. I want you to just take a look at this knee, and let's pretend he's not a baseball pitcher, but he just came down from a rebound because it's the same move. Okay, so instead of that knee bending like a hinge back and forth, our hip is rotated. And we have put a tremendous amount of force right there on our on our medial uh, our medial compartment. You will you will say, which is putting stress on our, our, our meniscus and our ACL and all that kind of stuff. So his first move, essentially, he's really violating. He's not going straight up and down. He's he's tilting. He's leaning forward, and all of this is a teach, right? He's been taught that. He's been taught the spine tilt. He's been taught to kick out his 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 uh, left butt cheek because he has not been taught to do a proper up and down whoops not that one a proper up and down squat right because that's essentially what this was we want him to move straight up and down and not forward to home plate right so there's been a lot of talk about you know where the arm needs to be when when the front foot hits the ground okay so as that hits the ground i'm going to tell you that it's not here okay mm -hmm. So we can look at his belly button being somewhere here and pointing over there as opposed to home plate. Okay. So, his, so he's at front foot strike, just to interject this for people listening. Yeah. Front foot strike, his back leg is anchored to the ground. Okay. And he's in and and when I teach any sort of athleticism, every movement needs to be athletic, meaning that from this position at the snap of a finger or the next frame, can he do another athletic move without having to do some sort of preparatory move? And the answer to that question is is no. This move here, this position, does not emulate or mimic any sport, okay? Football, basketball, tennis, this is in a very unathletic uh, uh, position at this point. We have talked in previous um, conversations about the upper traps. You can see them I'll completely shrugged, okay? This elbow pointed here towards home plate. That is a teach. There's absolutely no reason for that other than to, uh, you know, for we're flying. And I'm not making fun of this child. This is just stuff that has been taught or, or seen on social media that really does not make kinesiological sense. So... The end game here is I try to tell kids, okay, we're doing something very powerful, right? We're going to take this five-ounce baseball and throw it to home plate. So it should be something of a power move when we do that. So I always tell kids, all right, let's envision that there's a block of ice or a table or something that when you let the ball go, you have to smash it because if you're throwing with full power, as soon as you let the ball go, you know, three inches below that is this table that you should be able to smash with authority. So as like we get Danny to, LaRusso. Yes, like see, yeah, like exactly like the karate kid. <laughs> so as we begin to go frame by frame, you'll see that some of this gets worse, right? Our foot still anchored to the ground, our belly button still not turned towards home plate. 
and now that arm is way Never behind dragging. us. And what some people, I don't know, what have, we've it doesn't <laughs> exist, Kevin. Doesn't it doesn't exist? But you know when, uh, you know, this all came about because uh, what, what's that guy's name now for the Yankees? What's his name? Italian. Italian, right? He, you know, they're they're he has been taught that when that left foot hits the ground, his arm should already be in the throwing position. I a thousand percent agree. That would be what the throwing position would be. If we're looking at a clock, you know, it should be, you know, at, at 12 o'clock or straight up or somewhere heading towards a gravity assisted position, meaning that gravity is helping that arm go down as opposed to here. We still we're we still have to go up to go down. And this arm in this position is late. And that and is the window of injury, correct? Absolutely. Right. This absolutely, absolutely. So now, as we as getting the foot completely flat to the ground, and now beginning to rotate, you will just see something that we just don't like. Okay. Finally, now the foot has come up about an inch, but now this arm is here instead of here. Mm -hmm. So let's let's we're going to just clear everything out here, and we're going to put that layback way late. He's way back. So now let's put our Danny LaRusso, block of ice mm -hmm. here, right, or whatever. We're going to smash this, right, because, you know, this is hip height, right? We should be able to to to, uh, to smash this. It should look aggressive. And you're going to see that it's not even a it's, – it's, yeah. a, it's a slap. There's no power. You know, his, his whole trunk comes in way late. Still okay. behind his front leg even. Still behind end. him. So what does this – so from – from my standpoint, immediately, we've got a danger zone here. Okay, that's this is elbow, you know, an elbow injury um, waiting to happen. But more importantly, we're losing, you know, I don't know, ten miles an hour. You know, yeah. so I mean, if if this is sixty feet, right? He's very long. He's probably releasing this ball here. This is like kind of I said the Aroldis Chapman. Why is one on one get hit? Because it's really not 101, because it's 101 from, you know, 58 feet. If his arm was out here, right, right. now it's 101 from, uh, you know, 49 feet, right? And that's the definition of a heavy ball. The ball didn't get heavy on the way there. Heavy is an optical illusion, meaning that the eye can't pick things up that are right at you, right? So when we're letting the ball go closer to home plate, 85 becomes... 92 or oh wow that got on that got on me that's heavy that that got on me quicker yeah because he's releasing it closer to home plate and so it has less time to lose velocity that's and correct so you'll see that on a radar gun you see the the top rate peak radar the peak velocity and then they end the final velocity and the guys that have the smaller number between the two are the ones that get fully extended and release the ball further out in front so that's what's wrong you know what we do to correct this um you know i'd have him be linear here that um when his leg is, is even coming up from here as his leg begins to lift that he begins to sink down just like loading and hitting straight down and that he stays there as that leg comes down and out so it gets to a position where when his leg is out his butt is really back here his leg is here, his torso is here, just like an extreme load of hitting. And then it's essentially like we have talked about before, walking. He's just turning that trunk and letting everything happen. And you will see an immediate, because this finish is great. It's just late. It's late. Yep. Right. And, that, and that lateness is what, you know, we want to be late, and I'm sure you guys teach. You know, we want to keep the bat back and turn those hips, or we want to keep the... Uh, the golf club back, and I mean, these guys are watching the Masters are literally finished swinging, and they still have the club in, in the cock position. Right. Right, because the club or the bat is delivering the force. We can't do that with an elbow because an right. elbow isn't an aluminum bat or a graphite golf club. All the force goes through that elbow. And in my opinion, the lag, lateness, whatever you want to call, or for simple, for simple, you know, we cannot throw up to throw down it's we can't do it and if you if you accelerate up the hill down the hill it's you're too late you must accelerate the arm down the hill and with him it's a very it's a couple simple things like i said we have to be linear and we've got to unearth that back leg there's no reason in the world that that back leg is in contact with the ground right now 
None. Zero. Zip. But yet some people actually teach that, and that's insane. Well, so. you know, it's two, th- two things. Number one, I want to first point out that so uh, Tally, and, and by the way, uh, you know, I know you s- sent the article to me, uh, but they talk about how since he's had now two injuries, he used to be a really long pitcher. Very, long very long. Back, yep. And they've now since shortened him up. Um, and so we'll keep an eye on that because, you know, that's something that obviously we would recommend to do, especially coming off of an injury like that. Uh, but to prevent that injury, even the beginning, we want to have that arm path, as Kevin talked about, not leaving. It's almost like, you know, the train's leaving the station and you're still back there chasing after it. You know, That's you're not going to win that the train's going to win. I mean, um, for, it's stepping in the bucket, right? Remember that term? It's like, if yes. you're hitting your, all the weights forward and That's right. you've got nothing back there, you got nothing, nothing to rotate off the backside with at all. So, um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is I find this really interesting is in softball, Kevin, and I don't know if it's different, but in softball, um, you know, you can't leave the ground with your back foot. It's mm-hmm. illegal. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea why that uh, is. Uh, me either. It makes no sense to me. I mean, I, other than, you know, I, th- I think uh, Jason tried to explain it to me, our, our, our super fan Jason tried to explain it, said um, that it's an advantage because, you know, you're jumping at, but I'm like, it's not, it's not an advantage if you're, ju- if, first of all, if everyone can do it, how is it an advantage? Right. You know, I mean, I mean to like, me, you're, if you're trying to go forward and something is back, you're, you're causing torque to stop you causing friction. I mean, basically alone, you're causing friction, right? It's like, you know, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why in softball is, but I know, I mean, there's obviously no rule in baseball, but leaving that leg and teaching that I saw someone teaching. Yes. When we dig the groove with our toe, we want it to be in this. Tr- what, what, what are you, ca- are you crazy? And then here it is. Right. And it, just put this out here. So anyone is teaching anything, let's put the block out here. You should be smashing this, not slapping it. Okay, you're slapping it because that leg is being held back. And if you, if if the if the goal is to be here and just kind of slap, great. That's that's teach that. But if your goal is to be powerful here and smash that block as soon as you release and the as soon as you release that ball, you should have that power. Then leaving that leg back is wrong. Love it. Hey, one thing, um, and we saw a little bit here with this video. Uh, hip to shoulder separation was like this. It was all that was talked about, about going back probably about four or five years. Yep. It's, and they you know it sort of things quieted down about it. And now it's come roaring back. Yep. Uh, right. So now we can still have hip to shoulder separation without a long arm path. Right. Um, I think hip to shoulder separation, I think those terms are, are Over dangerous. Years? Are dangerous. They're dangerous. Yeah. You know, hip to shoulder separation means exactly this arm way behind, hip going this way. No, we want that to. I mean, this is where the power is that turn right there, right? And if you can imagine, if that front leg is helping the turn rather than being a sandbag, the power is going to be down. So to, to me, it's the it's the wrong target to talk about where power is being being generated because. We can have hip to shoulder separation in hitting in golf because the club and the bat are doing the work, right? A, a, a thing that and that doesn't snap, right? <laughs> to me, this once that front foot hits the ground, everything else has got to be in sequence, and it's got to be straight, straight through. And again, if the idea is power, put a block of ice there. If you can't break it, something's wrong. So by that, so by that center, because sequence, right? So if the midsection, like the hips and lower trunkers turning first, there will be a little bit of a disconnect between the hip and the shoulder as it moves in sequence. Right. But correct. To try to get all this extra is yeah, bad. No. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, you want to hold, you want to hold on to the ball on, uh, for as long as possible until that arm is in a gravity assisted position. And then you can do whatever you want. You can, yeah. you can, I mean, I mean, because then you're, you're, Gravity is the killer here. Gravity is, or, you know, that lag, whatever you want to call it, lateness, you know, against anti-gra- anti-gravity position, whatever you want to call it. It's, I mean, just, just someone just look at that. And if you think that looks good on your elbow, then it just, the torque is all here. I mean, you can see it. Well, proofs it's, in the pudding. This Kevin, this picture has what kind of pain? Uh, right medial elbow pain. 
There you go. Right. So and now just so just as a so you know he the pain is pretty much gone. His velocity has gone up about four to six miles an hour. Only getting him to go straight up and down, out and rotate. Very simple things. Getting him back to you know if we looked at him now he would he would smash that block of ice like there's no tomorrow. 